A modest, uh, a modest change in the dollar is what you would expect uh, on a day when the bank delivered exactly what it was expected to deliver and didn't make uh, any, if uh, 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 didn't make major, if any, changes to its forward-looking language. What's your what's your take, first of all, on what the Bank of Canada did and said today? Well, you're absolutely right. The market went into today anticipating that uh, the bank would do 75 basis points, exactly as they have, um, and also largely assumed that the bank would leave open the possibility and prospect of additional tightening. And it's very much the case that uh, we are very much closer to the end of the beginning of this uh, rate tightening cycle, but we're not there yet. And that, of course, was the way that the market was priced already going into the event. So, in a sense, it has and was always expected to be a relatively lackluster reaction, and that uh, is what we've seen. We have seen uh, just the US dollar just losing a little bit of ground in the course of the afternoon session here in Europe this afternoon. That comes on the back of what is and has been a record uh, and substantive uh, round of dollar gain. So I think it is very much a case of consolidation, yes, but when you look at uh, the uh, macro narrative, if we are going to see that just decelerating slightly uh, in as far as Canada is concerned, then we may well find that uh, this uh, modest uh, sort of uh, relief move in the Canadian dollar will prove to be relatively temporary. To understand the Canadian dollar and its path, uh, you always have to understand the U.S. dollar and its path. And the Canadian dollar, we're looking at it uh, on a one-year basis there. Here's a three-year basis look at the Canadian dollar. It's basically trading, uh, give or take a, a few fractions of a cent, at its lowest level uh, since uh, late 2020. Um, and that is largely on the back, isn't it, Jeremy, of a surging U.S. dollar. Well, you're absolutely right. And it's important because, of course, we're talking about the context of the Canadian dollar here. But when you look at the broader perspective, um, we look at a number of other uh, major currencies. If you're looking at sterling, you're looking at euro, you're looking at yen, all three of those are at multi-year extremes in terms of weakness against the US dollar. So it is very much a strong dollar story. And of course, if we differentiate the Canadian dollar away from just focusing purely uh, against the US, then we're talking about a much more robust uh, degree of performance relative to the euro and relative to sterling, for example. So I, I think we have to remember that it is predominantly a dollar story. It is very much a case that markets are reflecting and reacting on the flight to safety na nature and uh, variances in terms of the dollar. But also we're getting used to this higher for longer mantra from the Fed. Uh, and so a combination of these two factors are keeping the US dollar in the ascendancy. Um, and as I say, the Canadian dollar is it's holding up relatively well, certainly compared to its uh, G3 counterparts. How influential has been the uh, hawkish tone of recent comments from Jerome Powell at the U.S. Fed, particularly his uh, statement about uh, pay, pain coming to the U.S. economy and to, uh, to, to Americans as the, the Fed continues to boost interest rates? Well, we're very much on the, uh, sitting on the fence in trying to determine whether we think the next move from the Fed will be 50 or 75, although it does increasingly feel more likely to be a 75 basis point hike uh, because of the resilience in the labor market. And I think there is going to be this uh, question as to whether the U.S. is going to have a harder or softer landing. Uh, certainly, the most recent data suggests it's going to be slightly softer and certainly is more scope for uh, the U.S. economy to moderate without slipping into recession compared to many other markets. So I think it is still very much the case that the hawkish bias from Jerome Powell as espoused at Jackson Hole, one suspects he will reiterate that in his uh, appearance tomorrow at the Cato Institute, uh, will continue to validate that strong U.S. dollar bias, uh, which is uh, generally prevailing across all major marketplaces as we speak. Do you have a target on the Canadian dollar as to where it's going in the next six or 12 months? Well, I think in the very short term, it, it may well be the case that we do see a little bit of uh, additional and, and further weakness. But I think it is very much the case that the Canadian dollar will hold up relatively well over the uh, course of that six to 12 month uh, time horizon. So I think if we do see a uh, move up into the sort of uh, low sort of 132, 133 area uh, against the US dollar, that's the sort of magnitude that we would expect it to generally uh, sort of top out. We're not expecting a significant or a substantial uh, depreciation of the Canadian dollar, even though, as I say, we're, we're close to the end of the Bank of Canada's uh, rate hiking cycle. Jer